Hello, I'm Kevin Boston Hill, and welcome to Instruction Discussion, where each week we will examine a recent trend or development in education and its impact on Long Island. Today, we explore a somewhat controversial topic from an even more controversial source. On the heels of the Black Lives Matter movement is the I Am Black campaign started by charter schools nationwide. The I Am Black campaign is based on three simple statements. I am black, I support charter schools, and I vote. Joining us in class today to discuss this campaign and explain more about what charter schools mean to communities of color is Richard Bury, president of the Achievement First Charter School Network. Mr. Bury, welcome to Instruction Discussion on 90.3 WHPC. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to speak with you this morning. So, you know, before we actually delve into today's class, um, and I noticed that you have such a storied career, can, can you tell us a little bit about how you actually arrived to Achievement First? Sure, sure. Um, and, uh, you know, I think for me, this it really starts with my life growing up. I grew up in Brooklyn, uh, in East New York, Brooklyn, uh, which is a community on the border of Queens, primarily black and Latino neighborhood. And it's a community that for a long time has really struggled with uh, education options for black and Latino kids who live there. Um, neighborhood schools were not strong or they were not safe. My mom uh, was a public school teacher. She taught for almost 40 years at the same public high school in Brooklyn. Uh, and she was able to help me and my sisters navigate to excellent public schools. Uh, and that included going to uh, a school in Bushwick, a middle school, that was for gifted and talented students, uh, including going to Stuyvesant High School, one of the premier public high schools in the country. Um, my sisters also went to uh, uh, a variety of schools around the city, and we were lucky that we got a great public school education in New York. Uh, but I also knew growing up that the education I was receiving at schools like IS-383 in Bushwick and at Stuyvesant was just not the same as the education that many of the kids I grew up with were receiving. Um, and for me, that really sparked a lifelong passion uh, to try to make sure that more children, and particularly more black children from neighborhoods like East New York, had the opportunity to get the kind of great schooling that I got. Um, but you shouldn't have to take a test uh, to get that kind of education. Uh, and I've been trying to figure it out one way or the other ever since. Great, great. Yeah, I know that has been a, a kind of a, a sticking point with education, especially in New York City, when, and when, with regards to the specialized high school exams and things, that some people figure, well, you know, it's time to do away with those types of entrance, those high stakes exams at the high school level uh, and give everybody that opportunity, or at least take those those strategies that you're using in the specialized schools and, you know, in, in those resources and spread them across to the other schools as well to make, to get that educational equity across the board and not just for a select few schools. Absolutely. You know, a city like New York have an obligation to make sure that each and every student has an excellent education. It shouldn't matter what neighborhood you live in. It shouldn't matter your zip code. It shouldn't matter your income. It certainly should matter whether or not you are able to uh, uh, get test prep support so that you can take one of those tests to get into uh, one of New York's elite schools. Um, every student should have an access to a, a, a great education. And I really believe that charter schools can be part of that menu. Uh, you know, not for everybody, um, but in the school of a city of 1.1 million children and in a nation uh, uh, of over 70 million children who are attending public school, I believe that uh, charter schools can be part of the options of making sure that every student in every community uh, have great choices, uh, great options for their kids. So, you know, let, let's talk about that a little bit, because I know, um, as I, I alluded to in the intro, there, there's a little controversy surrounding charter schools. And because, the, especially in recent years, I guess we're going back almost 10 years now, um, there's been some backlash because some people feel that charter schools are private schools and they're getting public funding for their students and they kind of cherry pick the students as well. So let's set the record straight. Are charter schools public schools or private schools? So I think so much of this is just so much of the way people feel about charter schools is based on misinformation. So uh, let's get a few things straight. Charter schools are public schools everywhere. 
you know, public schools that are created to close opportunity gaps um, that we see in public education and to make sure that every child has access to a high quality education. There are public schools open to everyone. They do not charge tuition. You do not have to take a test to get in. Charter schools cannot pick and choose which students attend. To the extent that they can give preferences, it's the students who live in the community or students who have particular high needs. Uh, and when, when a school has too many students who apply, uh, more students who apply than seats, it has to distribute that seats on the basis of a lottery. So it's important to start with the idea that charter schools are public schools. Um, the difference between a charter school and a district school is that in a district school, uh, the district school is run by the school district, uh, the New York City Department of Education, or, or the district in whatever town you're in. For public schools, they are run by community partners, uh, nonprofit organizations, uh, social service agencies. Um, those partners uh, provide a public education, and it's a way of bringing new energy, new ideas, uh, some entrepreneurial spirit into the public school system, uh, but they are absolutely 100% public schools. Yeah, I mean, I, I knew that, but I just wanted to make sure that <laughs> for the rest of our, our listeners out there, because working having worked in uh, charter schools myself, that was one of the biggest things that, uh, or criticisms that I've received on a lot of different fronts. So I just wanted to have somebody hear it from someone other than me so that it yeah. wasn't just information out there. So, so thank you for that. Um, no, but, and what's so interesting is that I think in so many other contexts, um, the idea of having nonprofits partner with government to provide services is just not controversial, like after school programs or hospitals uh, in all sorts of different contexts. We're really used to the idea that nonprofits can work with government to deliver essential and quality services to, to families. Um, charter schools are no different. It's just another flavor of the same idea. So we know that currently um, about 70% of our charter schools, I guess nationwide, serve black and brown communities. So what role other than that do, do specifically do charter schools play in the public school sector? Well, I think uh, fundamentally public schools are about creating uh, more options for families who lack options. So, you know, where I grew up, again, I grew up in East New York, Brooklyn, District 19, I had a zone elementary school, a zone middle school, and a zone high school. Those were the schools you were supposed to attend if you lived in that block. The problem is that my zone elementary school, my zone middle school, and my zone high school just weren't doing a good job of educating kids. And uh, for too many families of color around too many cities and communities around the country, uh, that's the unfortunate fact, um, that just as the governments uh, of America have often failed, uh, black uh, families in, in areas such as public safety, just as we've often failed uh, black families in areas such as public health. Uh, it, 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 everyone who studied American history, who is aware of American history, understands uh, that America has not done right by uh, black Latino children. Uh, and that didn't end with Brown versus Board of Education. It's not like uh, when uh, the Supreme Court ruled in Brown versus Board of Education that segregation was illegal, and all of a sudden, educational opportunity was made a reality across America. So fundamentally, I think part of what charter schools do is in neighborhoods where families don't have a lot of great options, it creates another option for families, another place for, for you to uh, go and see if you can't get for your child the kind of education that works for you. It doesn't mean that every charter school is great. You know, there are some charter schools that are fantastic and others that are not, just like there are some district schools that are fantastic uh, and others that are not. Um, and it doesn't mean that every charter school is the same or for you. Different charter schools have different uh, philosophies of teaching. Some uh, focus on the arts or music. Others may focus on math or science. Um, but again, the question is, if you are a black family or a Latino family in a neighborhood where your local zone school is not doing a great job for you, uh, and or at least it doesn't feel like it's going to fit for you for whatever reason, um, why shouldn't you have uh, different opportunities uh, and why shouldn't you have different options? Um, that's something that other families take for granted. Uh, families with means make choices for their kids all the time. They can choose to send their kids to private school. They choose to move to another neighborhood where the public schools are stronger. They 
can choose to invest resources in test prep so that you can get into one of these specialized schools. Uh, I just believe that all families should have access to a great education, whether or not you have money, whether or not you have resources. Um, it shouldn't be that hard. And I just think that charter schools can be part of the solution, not for everybody, uh, but for many families. Okay. So let's let's talk a little bit about um, Achievement First, then, that's the, since that's the network you're currently heading. Uh, but before we actually get there, I guess, why did you to come to Achievement First? Because, again, especially since your career, you, you were at KIPP for a while. Uh, there was just another charter school network. Uh, and then you also worked within the uh, the New York City uh, Department of Education for some time. And, and I think you were also part of the, the push for the, the Pre-K for All initiative in New York City. So what led you to come to Achievement First out, after all of that? Yeah, you know, I've been so lucky that I've been able to spend so much of my career uh, working for kids, uh, and New York City kids in particular. And so coming to Achievement First for me uh, is uh, the next step, the next logical step for me in that story. So first of all, you know, Achievement First operates in three states around the country. Um, but our, uh, but 23 of those schools, 23 of our 37 schools are in Brooklyn. Uh, I was born and raised in Brooklyn. Uh, and so one of the reasons why I was so excited to come to Achievements First is because so much of our work is in Brooklyn. And in fact, so much of our work is in the neighborhoods where I grew up and spent my time growing up. Uh, we have a number of schools in the East New York neighborhood where I grew up, including one uh, just seven blocks from my home, where, I, where my parents still live, where I grew up. Uh, we have a middle school, which is located in the building where I went to middle school, where I spent three, uh, where I spent four years of my life, fifth to eighth grade. Um, so one of our schools is located in that building. Uh, and so I just have a lot of affinity for Achievement First because of where it does the work. Um, and I was also a part of, of helping Achievement First when it first came to New York. You know, when Achievement First, which started in Connecticut uh, over 20 years ago, uh, first came to Brooklyn, I was honored to serve as the chair of our school board here uh, when we first came into the community. So uh, in a lot of ways, it feels like coming home, uh, coming home to the neighborhoods where I grew up and, and and was first uh, educated, coming home to an organization that I uh, was proud to help grow in its early years in New York City. Uh, and it feels like the perfect fit for my work and my mission, which is all about making sure that every kid in communities like East New York or Bushwick or Brownsville has the opportunity to go to a great school where they are loved, where they are valued, where they experience joy, where they are challenged, and where they are learning. Uh, and that's what we try to do with Achievement First every day. And I just feel really blessed to have a chance to be a part of it. So you may have touched on this a little bit earlier, but what actually does set Achievement First apart from not only the surrounding district schools that it's that it's, um, in close proximity to, but other charter schools within the, the same cities that um, may share space with them? Sure, sure. And look, and for me, I just want to say it's not. For me, it's not so much about competition or what makes one school better than the other, because you know, as I said, different schools may be a fit for different people. Um, but I am incredibly proud of Achievement First track record, uh, and we've been work, do active for 20 years. Uh, so one thing is that we have a track record across those three states of completely closing gaps in reading and math. Just to give an example in Rhode Island. Achievement for students outperform not only students in Providence as a whole, but in the entire state of Rhode Island. Uh, we even outperform students in Massachusetts, which has one of the best public school systems in the country. Uh, if you look at our work in New York, again, um, uh, our scholars are significantly outperforming uh, other students around the state. So we, we uh, are proud of the high quality instruction uh, we offer the children, but we're also proud of the school environments which are the great, uh, which are environments that are characterized by joy, uh, a love of learning, uh, by caring. Uh, and like all other schools and organizations, you know, we are really a work in progress. Uh, we are not perfect by any means. Uh, I'll tell you that the challenge of, of managing schools during this COVID pandemic has knocked us for a loop, like it's knocked every other educator for a loop. Um, uh, I just have to give a shout out to every principal, every teacher out there today who is working hard under difficult circumstances to make a way for our kids because it's not easy. Uh, but one of the things that I'm really proud of about Achievement First is our ability to tackle challenges head on. Uh, and COVID is no exception. Um, 
when the crisis hit, you know, we closed those schools before the city did because we realized the public health threat. We immediately pivoted uh, to uh, trying to have some of the best remote learning of, in the country, and we've been have gotten, uh, again, not perfect, but we've gotten great accolades. Uh, by the way, we've been able to um, deliver a high-quality educational experience online, and that included distributing uh, thousands of devices, of Chromebook devices, uh, distributing hundreds of MyFi Internet devices so people have the, 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 the devices they need to get online, and then really pivoting quickly to try to figure out how do we deliver uh, an engaging, supportive, uh, rigorous education uh, in an online environment. Um, and so that's, that's a, the challenge we're still under, but I, I think more than anything, and I'm really part of the team at first is our ability time and time again to face challenges and to deliver for kids. You are listening to Instruction Discussion on the voice of Nest Community College 90.3 WHPC. My name is Kevin Boston Hill, and our guest today is Richard Bury, president of the Achievement First Charter School Network. Um, so, you know, let's let's get into uh, one of the reasons why you're here today, and that's to, uh, to just talk about the I Am Black campaign. Exactly what is that, um, what started it, and what do you hope to get out of this campaign this year? Well, I think for me, it goes to where you started, that there's so much misinformation or just a misunderstanding about what charter schools are and who charter schools are. And so for me, uh, as a black man who has spent my life in education, spent my life working on behalf of communities of color, it's important for me to stand up and say why I do this work and what this work is. And across the country, uh, there are amazing educators, uh, including black educators, um, who are working day in and day out in charter schools across the country um, to ensure that the children of their communities have a great education. And across the country, there are parents, millions of parents, including black and Latino parents, as you said, uh, the majority of charter school students around the country are students of color, who are every day making the choice that these schools are, for whatever reason, the best option for their children. And so it's important to us that we stand up and make our voices heard. Uh, too often, education remains one of the most polarizing subjects in the country. And for me, as a proud Democrat, somebody who's going to do everything I can to make sure uh, that we have much needed political change in our country. One of the things that I want to make sure that the Democratic Party, uh, the party I belong to, the party I support, a party that every election it wins, and if it wins this election, will be because uh, black people, including especially black women, who are the most loyal Democratic voters, come out uh, and vote uh, for the Biden-Harris ticket. We want to make sure that our voices are represented uh, in the halls of the Democratic Party as well. Um, and so for me, this is about just standing up for who we are and what we believe in and making sure that all the institutions um, that represent us truly represent us and are accountable to our voices as well. Great. And where, I guess, um, how far is the is this outreach? Because I know you, you mentioned that uh, at least the Achievement First networks are in three states, um, and so – is this going to be a national push, a national campaign, and how are you d doing your outreach? Absolutely. It's a national campaign everywhere from California to New York and everywhere in between. And part of the way we're doing it is by talking to leaders like you, um, getting out to the grassroots, making sure that people understand who we are and what we are. Uh, and part of the challenge is I think there's a caricature of charter schools in many communities. There's this idea that we are um, – a movement of people who want to uh, uh, end public education, or that were a movement of uh, wealthy billionaires who are trying to uh, undermine the public schools. And part of it for me is just telling you that's not who we are, and that's not who I am. Uh, I mean, I wish I was a billionaire. I am. I am not. According to according to Citibank, I am not. Um, what I am is a black man from New York who spent my life working for our kids. Uh, and I just want people to understand that that's the people who are at charter schools. Our teachers, our school leaders, um, often overwhelmingly people of color. Our parents and our students, often overwhelmingly people of color. And we just want to make sure that people 
uh, are actually understand who we are and what we believe in. And that way we can have a real and productive debate about the role that we play in the public education system of America. So where can people go to find out more information about this uh, tremendous campaign and how can they get involved if they so choose to? But one of the things I, I, I hope folks will do is uh, one of the sponsors of this work is the National Association of Public Charter Schools, which is a national organization that represents charter schools around the country. So I would encourage people to uh, go to our website, um, go to the National Association's website to learn more about our work, um, and to get involved in your local community. Uh, if you're in New York, uh, this, uh, you can go to the website of the New York City Charter School Center. It's a great place to go to learn more about uh, charter schools in your community, uh, and really just to get involved, to read up, to learn more. Um, and when you have a chance to sort of engage with your neighbors, your friends, or other elected officials about charter schools, uh, just be informed and, and ask real questions about uh, if somebody doesn't support charter schools, ask them why. Um, because I think oftentimes what you'll find is that uh, most of the opposition is not based on the facts, but is really based on uh, misinformation or misunderstandings about what our schools we are, really are, and, and most fundamentally, who we are, uh, who are the people who lead uh, and work in these schools every day. And I know a, a, a few years ago there was a, a movie that, well, I guess a documentary, really, that came out, uh, Waiting for Superman, and that mm -hmm. kind of highlighted the, the whole charter schools. And I think a lot of people, as you said, may have gotten a, uh, a misconception of what charter schools actually do and um, and the families in which they serve and, and the people who go there. And I think you clarified a lot of that uh, during the course of this conversation today. So tell us a, a little bit more about the, I guess, the students and the families that are really served, not just by charter schools in general, but by Achievement First Schools in particular. What, what are the, who are, who are the families and students who attend your schools? Sure. And as you're talking, I looked up the, the website just to make it easier for your listeners. Uh, if you go to charterswork.com, that's C-H-A-R-T-E-R-S-W-O-R-K, charterswork.com, that's a great place to learn more about our schools, to figure out how you can take action, how you can make policymakers uh, here in New York uh, or across the country. Uh, learn about why you support charter schools um, and why these are such an important part of our portfolio and why more communities should have access to more schools. So definitely encourage people to go to charterswork.com. In terms of our students, you know, we serve 15,000 students in three states, New York, Connecticut, and Rhode Island. 98% of our students are black and Latino. Uh, the vast majority of those students are eligible for free and reduced lunch. Uh, so these are kids uh, uh, from the city, like any other kids from the city, uh, um, uh, who, uh, whose parents every day wake up and try to figure out how to uh, build a strong life for the children and their family. So that's who we serve. We serve primarily black and Latino uh, children uh, in neighborhoods like East New York and Brownsville, uh, in neighborhoods like Hartford and Providence all around the country. And I'm so proud of our students. Uh, our students... They work so hard every day and they are kicking butt. They attend college at far higher rates than their peers. They're better prepared when they get there and they complete college at five times the rate of similarly situated students. Um, our schools are rigorous. Our students come to school and they love learning. They work hard. They also play and they have fun. They do art and music and dance and sports like everybody else. Um, and uh, I, I'm just every day blown away by the amazing talent of our students and by the incredible hard work of our teachers, uh, even more so now, given the challenges of, of operating schools during this pandemic, now more than ever. And I know you mentioned that 98% of your students are black or brown students, black and Latino students. So mm -hmm. what, about your, what about your faculty? How, how is your faculty represented? What's the diversity makeup of your, of your faculty? The yeah, Earth faculty similarly is predominantly black and Latino. Um, I think like a lot of organizations, it has been as a result of very intentional work. Um, so over the years, we have intentionally sought to seek out and elevate uh, leaders of color. We know that the research is overwhelmingly overwhelming, um, that even having one teacher of color uh, can make a tremendous difference for black and Latino students. It has demonstrable effects 
on young people's long-term educational achievement uh, and attainment. Um, so for a number of reasons, we are really committed to continuing to increase those numbers. But um, uh, it, it's, it didn't just happen. You have to be intentional about it. And it's something that Achievement First is incredibly intentional about. And we do much better now uh, than we did 20 years ago. So if you had... And, and certainly I should say, you know, the teaching force would be more diverse, for example, than the New York City District School's teaching force. Uh, and I think you'll find that in a lot of communities. It's something that we work on doing very intentionally. Excellent. And I'm sure that a lot of our listeners wanted to hear that um, because we see that in a lot of cases, the the students don't get to see people in front of them who look like them when they're sitting in their classes. So I think that's a, a really big, a, a big load off for them. Um, yeah. So it, if you had to leave our audience with one final thought, uh, whether it be about the I am black campaign or just charter schools in general, what is that thing that you want your, our listeners to know? That's a great question. If I had to leave your listeners with one thought, it would be simply this. Trust parents. Trust parents. Uh, fundamentally, what charter schools are about is saying to communities, saying to parents, that if your neighborhood school is not doing right by your kids, uh, you should not be limited um, by the shortcomings of that school that families should have a say in what's best for their kids. And so when you say to a family that charter schools are wrong or there shouldn't be a charter school in your community, what you're saying to black and Latino parents is that they don't know what's best for those kids. Those 3.3 million families who every day uh, send their child to a charter school around the country, um, you're saying to those families that they don't know what's best for their kids. Um, I don't believe that. You don't believe that. I know our listeners don't believe that. Uh, and so fundamentally, that's what I want to leave uh, your listeners with. Trust parents to know what's best for their kids. Well, thank you again for, for those words of wisdom. And, of course, we love to thank our guest today, Mr. Richard Bury, president of the Achievement First Charter School Network, for coming on the show today. Thank you so much for having me. I hope you and your listeners have a great day. Stay safe and uh, wear your mask and vote. Thank you, and you do the same.